The year is 1930 in a small Spanish village called Borja. A classically trained painter named Elias Martinez creates a beautiful realistic fresco on a small church pillar where it would remain cherished for the next 70 years. Enter Cecilia Jimenez, an untrained elderly amateur artist, decided to repaint the now very much deteriorating painting. And what we got was a shock to everyone. Behold, the painting now dubbed Behold the Monkey. Overnight, it became a worldwide sensation with merchandise, cosplays, wine, and of course, the memes. So many memes. But what if, hypothetically speaking, we wanted to turn it back to its original self? Hi, my name is Ray. I'm an artist here on YouTube, and today I plan to do exactly that. Or try to. I have a lot of work cut out for me. Today I'm going to try something completely new, completely out of my element. It's something I specifically have never seen done on art YouTube before. By first painting Miss Cecilia's painting with acrylic paint, then I'm going to completely convert and repaint it back to Elias Martinez's painting. So basically, I'm going to be on two artistic extremes in one video, but I think it'll be an interesting experiment. Follow me. If you're new here, I highly recommend that you subscribe, as well as check out my other art challenge playlist videos. I will leave the playlist down below. And if you're old here, first of all, thank you. <laughs> but for you guys who are all caught up on content, I'll leave my second channel down below. I have been uploading there so much more recently. And yeah, I'm sorry this video took so long to create, but as you're about to see, it's a lot. <laughs> so yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this ball rolling. Now, when you look at the original, it's painted directly on the wall, which to be honest, I don't think that would have been very archival from the start. So I think the artist knew eventually that this was gonna happen to his artwork, you know? So for this specific project, canvas is just not gonna cut it this time. It's too soft and porous. And that's where good old gesso board comes in. Not only is it my personal favorite thing to paint on, like as far as like surfaces go, but if you look at the texture of it, it looks a lot like a plaster wall, which I think will be a perfect substitute for, well, <laughs> an actual wall. And for this project, instead of going in with the original oil like Cecilia used, I'm gonna have to start off with acrylic paint. Because as the old saying goes, you can put oil on top of acrylic, but you cannot put acryl acryl acrylic on top of oil. So uh, here it is in all of its completed, replicated glory. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It took me about three hours to recreate. Not only was I replicating uh, another artist way of painting, uh, like the way they do their brush strokes and whatnot, but I also had a lot of trouble making the acrylic paint texture look like an oil paint texture. As you guys know, I did a whole entire video as to why I don't think I'm very good with acrylic. I struggle with it a lot compared to oil. And while I was studying the techniques of Cecilia's painting, it looked like to me that she might have overblended the oils, which is very, very, very easy to do, specifically around the mouth area. As you can see, there's like a little bit of smearing going on. Which again, no tea, no shade. If you look at her other artwork, she doesn't seem to have that problem, so I don't know what was going on. And to be fair, she didn't finish the painting. So, you know, that's just something to consider. But honestly, this is iconic. <laughs> I truly, in my heart of hearts, wish I could just leave this up and hang it up in my studio. I think nobody can deny that having this hanging up in your house would make an incredible conversation starter. But guys, that's not the case. We gotta keep going. So guys, I created a four-step plan to convert this back to its original state. State, starting with the most difficult thing, converting the face back to realistic proportions. <laughs> now, 
Now for this section, I actually was pleasantly surprised. And you're probably gonna think I'm crazy for saying this, but surprisingly, the facial features and the, the placement of said facial features weren't too off from the original. And I think it's because she painted directly over the eyes, directly over the mouth, etc., etc. So I didn't have a hard time placing the facial features at all. Okay, so I went ahead and did the first layer of the face and already you can see that it's already starting to come back to life. If you look at the original, it looks like his robe went all the way down and Cecilia added in this piece right here. No tea, no shade, but I think it'll look a little bit more cohesive than uh, the scroll that we have down here. Okay, okay. Okay, so I just finished both the neck and the robe in 25 minutes, which is actually alarmingly fast, but that's okay. I'm feeling very hopeful and excited for the next aspect of my painting. So this leads me to step three of my plan, and that is converting the background back to its original color. Now, when you look at the original painting, the background was much more yellow. And that's really interesting to me because when you look back at Dark Ages fresco paintings, a lot of them had that exact same color background and as well as like the simplified scroll. Yeah, I see what he was doing there. Okay, the background is done. Okay, so I'm at a point where I'm really unhappy with it right now. For some reason, it looks like Drake. <laughs> I'm just not happy with the proportions. I'm not happy with the coloring, I wanna say. So I am gonna give it a day or two. I'll come back to it, reevaluate, add some color, and then the crown, and then I'll be done. Now for this last and final section, it's 100% easier said than done. It ended up being a whole entire day of just subtle tweaks added to the face to, you know, just give it that little extra pizzazz. Bruh. And it might be a little hard to see, but I'm gonna try my best to explain what exactly needed to be fixed. Now, the very first thing that needed to be done is I needed to snatch that face. Just like I would makeup, I added in highlights and shadows and contour. Not only will it help it look less uh, weird, but it'll also make it look a little bit more realistic, give it some more color and just look better. Then I went in and fixed his eyes. And believe me, I know the painting looks absolutely <laughs> insane right now, but I'm gonna need you to just trust the process. All right, perfect. See, the eyes are already looking much better. Uh, on to the next thing will be the mouth because I feel like it's a little off center and needs to be fixed a little bit. And same goes for the neck. I felt like it was a little bit too wide. It needed to be pulled in and refined a little bit. And ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to the final step, cleaning up the edges, making it look a little more crisp. And I am so proud to say that's it. Okay, so here it is in all of its glory. I'm not gonna lie, this was one heck of a challenge. Do I think it came out as perfect as I wanted to? I, I don't think so, but I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of myself for this challenge. Now, with that being said, guys, if you wanna see more art challenges, I will leave a playlist down below, second channel as well. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notifications. And yeah, with that being said, guys, I will see you next video, bye.